back to the channel guys it's been about two weeks since i posted the last video where we were kicking off the ptv or personal track vehicle build uh, and uh, i haven't made a ton of progress in the past two weeks uh, i did manage to get a cold i'm working through the last bit of that right now so my voice might sound a little different uh, aside from that i have managed to get uh, a little bit of the design work done. I got some uh, CAD drawings sent off to have some materials laser cut. At first I was going to do a bunch of work using the uh, old mill and drill here, cutting all my uh, plates for the drive motors and pumps etc. But I just found that getting them laser cut is just way easier and at the end of the day the material plus my time is really equivalent to just getting them laser cut and they come uh, exactly how I want them. I don't have to worry about all the consumables that I would use for the mill and drill or just making a mess in general. It just makes things a lot easier. So uh, we're going to get going today with uh, some smaller parts fabrication and uh, even working on the tracks a little bit. So let's get going on that. So we're out in the shed here and I already have the, uh, the middle drive sprocket uh, installed in the chuck here so it's ready to go. We're going to use the boring bar just to basically remove this UHMW material from inside this ring uh, to a point where it will basically just kind of pop off and then we can switch over to the button cutter and uh, basically clean up all of these inside little flutes here and uh, make a nice smooth surface. There we go. We have uh, removed that center ring and we've just, like I said, we are going to take off those little uh, ribs there. And so we've done that. And basically the diameter now from inside to inside here is five inches. That is the diameter of the plate that I am having uh, laser cut to fit in here. And so basically a little bit of cleanup to remove some of these burrs and this is ready to go. We have our outer drive sprocket mounted up. We're going to basically do the same thing we did for the inner one. We're going to remove these ribs and just make this entire surface from about right here to the center all one flat thing. So I'm going to do that in real time. It goes pretty quick. So uh, here we go. <laughs> There we go that's all there is to it it goes nice and quick the lathe obviously makes a a nice clean finish on that so that when we get that plate in there it's gonna uh, sit nice and flat and uh, that's how we're gonna be able to drive those tracks here are those hubs they are all done and we're gonna move on to uh, working on the front bearing that's gonna hold the uh, drive shaft for these hubs so Digging through all my parts, I did find these uh, bearings here. They are a one inch uh, inside diameter and they're a type of flange bearing. I can't remember exactly what I'd ordered these for, but uh, I have five of them and uh, we only need four. So what we're gonna do is uh, start making a tube that's gonna hold these bearings and uh, start mocking up the uh, front axle uh, system for the PTV. So I've come up with a little bit of a mock-up here. You have to excuse the crudeness, but I think this is going to help uh, you guys visualize what exactly I'm trying to do here. So I have the uh, drive motor just sitting in place. We have a laser cut plate that's going to be used to uh, mount it in place of this piece of square tubing here. We're going to cut it out, weld it in. The motor will mount there. It has some slots for adjustability to uh, tension the chain and get any of that slack out of it. Uh, and a key 
note here is uh, the angle of this tube, you could see as it rises up to this mounting tube here, we're gonna try and carry that forward all the way up to the drive axle on the track. And that's just gonna allow the chain to pass over and under that uh, tube without any kind of interference. If we come up to the front here, you can see the drive axle arrangement. So we have our outer uh, track drive sprocket, our inner track drive sprocket. Here is our flange mount bearing that's gonna sit inside there. We have our other flange mount bearing here. This is our chain drive for the, uh, the motor drive part of the track and our other outer track drive sprocket. So what we're gonna do is use a piece of this heavy wall tube here to make an actual uh, carrier, if you will, uh, and that's where these two bearings are gonna fit in. We're gonna try and make it as wide as possible to uh, increase its support capacity and uh, just kind of reduce that moment of uh, pivot on the track. There's gonna be a lot of pressure on this uh, axle. So the wider it is, the, the better it will be to distribute that load. So once we get this machined and the bearings in place, we're gonna use a piece of rectangular tube that'll come off of this upper uh, mounting tube here. It's gonna come back to here. And then we're gonna just triangulate that down to the little uh, axle down here. And that should be our, uh, our track drive setup. So this is why, when people ask why I don't have a plasma, well, plasma just doesn't give you that type of a cut. It's just so much easier to work. You know that this is an actual true square cut relative to the dimension of the tube. Putting this into a lathe is way easier than some randomly cut piece of tubing with a plasma cutter. This is the other reason I love a good quality bandsaw. Uh, over a plasma cutter. You don't have to do anything. The tool is doing all the work right now. I can go off and look at other stuff. I don't have to focus on that cut. I know when it's done, it's gonna shut off and be good to go. So now that we've got these tubes cut, the next step is to take these out to the shed, put them in the lathe, and we're going to machine them down on the inside so that these bearings can fit. So we are looking at uh, an outside dimension of almost exactly two inches. And these tubes here, the internal dimension is right around, oh, that's super close. So we need to take off about 45 thou uh, we're basically just going to be cleaning up the inside of this uh, for these bearings to sit in there. Okay, we got our machining all done and the bearings fit in absolutely beautifully. Um, I wouldn't say it's a press fit, but um, it does take a little bit of working to get them in there and uh, there's no play whatsoever. So those are basically ready to go. You can see there, there we are, a nice tight fit. So the next step is to work on getting these mounted onto those drive axles and getting everything kind of aligned for the drive shaft. So here is our bearing. It is uh, mounted onto the piece of one inch keyed shaft that we are gonna use for our drive shaft. And uh, yeah, this is gonna work out really nicely. So the next step to tackle here, and I hate to say it, but um, the drive shaft that we have, uh, the keyed one inch shaft we have is uh, not gonna be long enough. So. We basically need a piece that's the width of the track. So the tracks are 15 inches, so that would mean we need one 30 inch piece of this key shaft. So we have 27 inches, so we are three inches short, which uh, means we need to make this longer. So this is my solution to that 
drive shaft that's a little too short. That's where the rest of that shaft has gone to. So we're gonna pull these sprockets off and salvage this piece of one inch key shaft. We will weld it back onto that piece that we have already allocated for the track and that should get us on our way. Okay, so I retrieved that piece of <clears throat> shaft out of that little Jeep outside. And what we'll do is we'll basically just prep that uh, joint there so that we can weld these back together and then we can uh, have a full 36 inch piece of shafting that we can cut uh, as required. I just came out. I was gonna get the uh, snowcat out for a little ride. It's actually just above freezing right now. So that's kind of nice. And uh, as I was coming over, I realized that this track here looks somewhat loose, looser than it should be anyway. And upon closer inspection, it looks like all of the bolts in my rear tire are missing. So another fun little repair that we need to do on the cat. Might as well get that done now. Well, we've got the cat in the garage. We've got that rear tire off and it really doesn't look that bad. All right, let's get back to business. Go and play. Well, Snowcat is back in action. It's running good. A little mishap with that tire there. No big deal. I'm uh, happy that worked out uh, so nicely. So it's, uh, it's a fun machine for plowing snow, actually. It, uh, it can really get around quite, uh, quite well. It's very nimble. And um, yeah, it, it makes short work of a little bit of cleanup on the driveway here, as you could see. 
But uh, enough playing around. It's time to get back into the garage and we're gonna continue working on that drive shaft a little bit more now. All right, well, we are back in the shop here. The battery in my phone died while we were goofing around with the mini snow cat. So while it was charging, I went ahead and got this drive shaft welded up. And that is about all I have for getting parts ready today. We did pretty good getting our bearing tubes all ready. And uh, it's just nice overall to have all these components ready and at, at hand. So once we start the real detailed fabrication, we're not looking for anything. We can just kind of focus on the one thing that we're doing. So until we get our laser cut parts, we're really not going to be able to get any further into fabrication. Uh, those are fairly important for getting the, uh, the motors mounted into the tracks. Uh, it's also critical for getting the pumps mounted onto the engine. So, uh, like I said, until those laser cut parts are here, I'm not going to be able to make a ton of more progress. What I might end up doing in the next week or so is working on this engine a little bit. It hasn't been started in probably a good two years, so it's uh, a little grimy. It's uh, probably got a carb that's going to need some TLC. So I'm going to look at uh, getting that unit revived uh, while we're waiting. And so having said that, I'm going to end this video here. I would like to say that we've reached uh, 975 subscribers on the channel. That's really exciting. And uh, we're only 25 away from reaching that big uh, 1,000 subscriber milestone. So if you haven't already, uh, please be sure to uh, subscribe and like. I really do appreciate it. It's uh, nice to have all of you along for these videos, and I hope that you guys are enjoying the uh, type of videos that I'm putting together here. And so on that note, uh, have a great day. Thanks for watching.